Let's talk about some of the reasons I'm excited for Linux in 2024. I think this is going to be a big year. There's been exciting developments in Linux over the year, and this new year, 2024, is shaping up to be one of the best for Linux in a long time. At least I'm excited for a lot of things here. Let's get into some stuff by first talking about Rust in the Linux kernel. This year, I covered how Rust is slowly merging into Linux. With many projects underway, including sudo rs, the Rust version of sudo, with other things such as updated storage disk drivers in Rust with some seemingly beneficial performance updates. I think it's going to be an exciting year for Rust and Linux. And one of the main reasons I'm excited for Rust and Linux is the Cosmic Rust desktop. The team over at System76 has been hard at work throughout the year preparing the new desktop environment. I've been covering the updates for nearly a year now, and I'm excited to try and install this new desktop for myself. As you can see here, I started early in January of 2022 and have been steadily releasing update videos on how the new Pop! OS Cosmic Desktop has been evolving over the last year. And clearly there's interest in this with tens of thousands of views with many cool updates, including floating window arrangement and window tiling management in Pop! OS. It's all being upgraded on the new Cosmic Rust Desktop. I've covered many of these topics in the past, so you'll definitely want to check out some of those videos. They've put effort into making a new Cosmic Text Editor, which overall works really well. I've tried it out many times now, and it's being advanced. Now, the question in the back of everyone's minds is when is System76 releasing the Pop! OS Cosmic Desktop? I'm predicting sometime this year we will be seeing a full release of the Cosmic Rust Desktop. Most likely, it's going to occur somewhere here in April. With the 20.04 LTS release, Cosmic Desktop will be getting updated. Now, whether or not it becomes the new Cosmic Rust Desktop, we'll see, but that's at least what the developers have been hinting at as long as things come along seamlessly in development. And it does seem that way. They are going down the issues list and getting us close to a beta release version, but they're still taking their time to get things right. I'll be releasing even more information on the Cosmic release as it gets closer to that April date. These are a few of the reasons that I'm super excited about Rust in the Linux kernel. With new desktop environments, better performing applications, better performing drivers, all because of Rust's ability to keep things memory safe, it's going to be an exciting year for Rust in the Linux kernel. It's also stacking up to be an exciting year for Wayland and Pipewire, two big names that have sparked a flurry of software updates across the Linux ecosystem. Things like Blender, Apache, Mozilla's Firefox, Thunderbird, Chromium all have started implementing Wayland. And there is a new Wayland compositor called Louvre, which is bringing us phenomenal updates, including better stability in the frames per second when using the new Wayland compositor and other varying benchmarks that are exciting to see and will be thoroughly tested here in the 2024 new year. Both Wayland and Pipewire are definitely picking up speed in Linux, including many distributions going over to Wayland, including Red Hat Enterprise Linux 10 with its plans to get rid of the Xorg server in place for Wayland. Now, this has been happening for a while here with Linux distributions, but it seems like the adoption is finally being pushed over the edge for Wayland, and I'm excited to see how that progresses in 2024. Although Wayland has had its problems being adopted with going over to Wayland with some applications just like this. Firefox being launched on Xorg without compatibility causes crashing. Yes, it's that easy to overlook and not test things, causing compatibility issues and allowing the system to crash, all because of incorrect compatibility between Wayland and Xorg. Either way, we're going to get improvements for this, and I still remain optimistic about Wayland on Linux. Speaking about Wayland on Linux, let's talk about gaming on Linux. I'm excited for gaming on Linux this year as Linux finally surpasses Mac OS with nearly 2% of all gaming systems running Linux now. This is quite the change over the last year, mainly in part to the Steam Deck running Linux. I believe this is only an introduction to running Linux on desktops, especially for gaming. I believe that market share will rise over the next year. And there's an exciting focus on gaming with more Game releases working natively on Linux, it seems to trend in the positive direction, especially with the Steam Deck and Steam pushing Linux. 
Also, one of the biggest things in Linux is the NVIDIA Linux Open GPU kernel module source code that was given to us from NVIDIA, which is greatly welcome news as NVIDIA for the longest time was closed source. We couldn't get any of the kernel modules because we didn't have access to the source code. But in May of 2023, the source code was released and people have been hard at work optimizing NVIDIA GPUs for the Linux kernel. I believe this will bring in a new wave of using the Linux operating system in AI, especially with NVIDIA's GPU accelerated AI models. This is a great thing because seemingly GPUs are being used in these AI applications and it brings Linux at the forefront of these AI environments because it's free and open source. Why get stuck into paying for other types of operating systems for production environments or for the AI space? I think we can fine tune Linux over the year in order to get it to support new NVIDIA GPU architectures. Definitely an exciting year coming for Linux and graphics. Let's talk about some of the new Linux distributions that I'm excited for. Also, I know that there's plenty of things that you're excited for this year, so make sure to comment below what you're excited for in 2024 when it comes to Linux. Also, subscribe below as we're getting close to 50,000 subscribers on the channel. Thank you, everyone, for a great 2023. Let's talk about some excitement in the Linux distribution release, one being the Ubuntu 20.04 long-term support. That's right, the roadmap has been released for 20.04 as it's coming in April very soon here, including new Flutter apps, new designs, security center updates, and much, much more, including a way to install the G Suite. This new Ubuntu release signifies the long-term support edition which many production environments are looking forward to using. So they get longer maintenance and security support. I'm excited for 2024 because I get to update a lot of my production environments. I typically skip the every second year mark, meaning every two years we get a long-term support edition while I wait about four years to actually update production environments. And this year is the year those environments get updated. So I can get more support, but there is a different distribution that I'm also excited about. We've already briefly talked about this one but it's Pop! OS. Pop! OS is getting an updated release with many updates and hopefully if things work out in our favor, we will be getting that new desktop environment built on Rust called Cosmic Desktop. I'm definitely excited to keep trying that out and testing out the latest and greatest in Pop! OS. Are there any distributions that you're excited about particularly for the new year? Let me know. In a pretty big turn of events, Fedora is now offering an Acai Linux remix. This means Fedora can now be used on Apple Silicon Macs, basically replacing Mac OS and is a great stride forward in Linux. This is exciting for those of us who have old MacBooks and even new ones. The team at Acai has been working hard to get Linux over to the Mac as well. Now we can use some powerful hardware with an expansion of Linux on it, including on chips like the M1 and M2 with many drivers already offered today on both models. You'll definitely want to check out Acai Linux and the Fedora Remix project if you have a Mac. I envision a lot of updates coming to this in 2024 with a few more drivers needing to be touched up, including the USB-C display drivers, the Thunderbolt USB 4 drivers, microphone and touch ID, all things that the Acai Linux team is hard at work. There's also updates to be made in the graphics including stuff like using the neural engine, but they have accomplished 3D acceleration support with the graphics on Macs, which is an exciting deal, especially if you recognize how close source and how much work it goes into reverse engineering Apple's operating system. Great work to the Acai Linux team. Another big push is the expansion of IoT. Linux, including Ubuntu Linux, is highly focused with their partners in driving new IoT devices. Many big players such as Intel, Raspberry Pi, AMD, Nvidia, Dell, and many more have already started adapting Linux-based IoT smart devices into their production environments. This includes things like signage embedded systems, robotics, industrial applications, as well as automotive. So now many companies are adopting these production environments and applications because of the expansion, an excellent choice of Linux IoT, such as Ubuntu Core, on devices 
due to the robustness and security features offered by Linux. I do speculate that over the next year, we're going to see more architectures introduced in the IoT sphere with other distributions highly focused on trying to get their distributions onto IoT devices, especially with the integration of artificial intelligence, including things like machine learning, deep learning, and data analysis with these IoT devices because it's built for business. And we know all the buzz right now is AI. And I'm sure there's plenty of businesses out there trying to figure out how to integrate AI into, the, into their systems and what better way with IoT devices that can communicate with these AIs in production environments. All right, and two big deals for me, one being an application that I'm working on on Linux. That's right, I've started developing something for Linux that I'm excited about. I've been posting about this in the community chat, so make sure to subscribe below. That way you can keep following along as things get updated, but it's an app that's going to hopefully help users monitor their resources effectively and easily on Linux. I'm gonna run what I currently have developed here. I'm focused on making this only for Linux, at least at the moment, and it's a resource monitor app that allows you to monitor information directly from the system in a very easy and intuitive app, including things like CPU usage, memory usage, storage disk network, and many other stats. Currently where this sits is I'm able to get system stats from the background. As you can see here, the, all the system stats are being displayed. I'm super excited about this one because I'm not only able to give back to the Linux community after these last few amazing years of consistently posting videos and updates to Linux. I'm gonna to continue 2024 by doing this as well as building out this app, which I'll make available when I get to a good point. Now it doesn't look like much, but it does take quite a bit to do this. I currently have a WebSocket communicating back to the front end app, which is built on Flutter and can display information directly on the application. This took a lot of work. The back end is in C, so I can show you some of that as well. If I run main here and then connect to my WebSocket, I should be able to get information as well. Look at that, I'm getting information. Why this is important is I'm now able to take this information and actually store it anywhere I need to by simply collecting it via a socket. This allows information to be pushed to a cloud or a different program entirely, and then use that to collect time series data, meaning you can collect your system usage over a vast period of time, let's say a month or so, so you can reliably diagnose and understand how your system is running. I'm excited for this app. Hopefully you are too. I'm gonna to be creating videos and much more, but I do wanna make one last big announcement. Thanks for everyone who's been supporting me at learn.savvynick.com. There was a lot of interest in my C++ course that's all centered around Linux. And I wanna make the announcement that I am offering this course for free. Over the next 18 to 20 weeks, I will be slowly releasing my videos and my full course. A special thanks to everyone who has paid for the course. You're the ones who have been able to help me release this for free. So again, starting more than likely this Sunday, I'll release my first video in the series and the series will also come with its own set of quizzes that you can take. So if you've wanted to learn C++ on Linux, it's time for you to subscribe below. Catch me in a great community on Discord. Looking forward to an amazing year for Linux in 2024.